This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Hey, everybody, welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life. I'm Ginger Stocky, and we are so happy you have joined us. Today, I'm gonna challenge you just a little bit. Joyce has some things for you that will help you through these challenges, so don't get nervous, all right? Stay with me. First, we want to invite you to study God's Word for 30 minutes a day for 30 days. It's called the 30-30 Challenge, and it's a challenge because you will be amazed with what can happen in 30 days when you give God just 30 minutes of your time. Now, don't worry, we have all of the tools online to help you. We have study guides, downloads, tips from Joyce, and so much more when you sign up at joycemeyer.org slash 3030 challenge. So grab that challenge today and see what happens in your life when you do this. The second challenge we have for you is to think of someone you know that God is telling you to forgive. Yeah, I know you did not want to hear that word, but maybe you've been deeply hurt by this person and you're holding on to that pain. Well, today we're challenging you to finally forgive them and we're doing it because we know how it will help you so much. Today and tomorrow, right here on the program, we're sharing a discussion from Joyce's Talk It Out podcast. Joyce will be part of it. She's coming right along where we talk about how to truly forgive so let's jump right into that conversation. Welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Oh, you're welcome. We appreciate I it. Just kind of felt that you needed me today. <laughs> she knew she always felt it in her spirit. <laughs> Actually, I really am glad she's here today. Are you? Yeah, I made a list of questions. Oh, oh. well, good. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I did. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> Well, we're talking about forgiveness today. We'll just throw it out there because it's so important. We don't need to sugarcoat it. We don't need mm -hmm. to warm up to it. Everybody in our lives at different times needs to forgive someone, yeah. needs to forgive ourselves, yeah. whatever it may be. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to hear from Joyce explaining about forgiveness and exactly what it is and why it's so important. And then we'll come back and we'll all talk it out together. Matthew 6, 12 through 15, maybe a familiar scripture, but I want you to see the word. So let's put it up. And forgive us our debts as we have forgiven, left, and remitted, and let go of the debts, and have given up the resentment against our debtors. Now, pay attention to that because we probably really don't want God to do that, but that's the way He does it. We really would not want God to forgive us the way we forgive others. <laughs> and how many years have we prayed that Lord's Prayer and we think it sounds so spiritual and so holy? Listen to what you're saying. God, the same way I forgive other people, that's the way I want you to forgive me. Sometimes we kind of sort of do the official I forgive you thing. But that's different from total forgiveness. Now, if somebody's been abusing you, total forgiveness doesn't even always mean restoration of the relationship. But it is about how you talk about them, how you feel about them, how you pray for them, what you would like to see happen to them. How you respond when you hear they've been blessed. Oh, come on, we're gonna dive in today. <laughs> I have to help you get over this. I have fought this battle myself and I'm just telling you, you're going to have no quality of life until you get over these things. And you have to get good at it because this is not one of those one time in a life trials. You're going to have this many, many, many times in your life. Many times. And don't think just because you go to church, you won't get offended there because you will. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive people their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, leaving them, letting them go, and giving up the resentment, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, 
Now, come on, let's act like we believe this today. Let's don't just read it. Let's don't just pray the Lord's Prayer as some rote repetition because we think it sounds spiritual. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, leaving them, letting them go, and giving up the resentment, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. That's a big statement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, it is. She made such a great point that we really don't want God to forgive us the way we forgive other Even people. Even just sitting here listening to it, I'm going like, yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you want to take it back? <laughs> right. I mean, I've been that? teaching that for years, but it's just like, wow. I mean, if that's yeah. really true, and we know it is because it's the Bible, mm -hmm. we better change the way we do things a little bit. Yeah, it kind of makes me rethink how I've handled so many different situations because I thought I have forgiven, but do my actions afterwards, is that is that how God is forgiving me? Probably not. So, mm. like, I forgive a little bit, yeah. and then I get mad again, and I take it back, mm -hmm. and then maybe I'll take another step forward, a little bit of forgiveness, mm -hmm. then I'll get hurt a little bit more, mm -hmm. and I'll stay mad for a while and not talk to you. Uh -huh. I, you know, I don't uh -huh. want God doing that with me. You Throw know? some guilt in there every exactly, few days. Exactly, right? Uh -huh. Any little jab I can get in, or something I can say to somebody else. Oh, that yeah. maybe makes them mad at them too. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. I don't want God Good. treating me that way. I mean, Ouch. If we just sat and thought about what we just heard for about an hour, it's like, it puts a little bit of the reverential fear of God it in does, you. It's yeah. like, this is really, really something that's important. Mm -hmm. And like you said earlier, everybody's faced with this. I was thinking about a girl who told me one time that she counted how many times in one week she had an opportunity to be offended <laughs> and had to decide rather mm -hmm. to forgive mm -hmm. or to take the offense. And she said it was 40 times mm. Wow! in one wow. week. And that is probably just an average week. I mean, it may yeah. not have been anything out of no. the ordinary. It's just the way it is. Sometimes. I don't think we realize how often yeah. we do have to just decide to let it go or to believe the best or to... Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you... if if you soak that stuff up all the time, you're going to have a problem. Yeah. I love what you said, too, that you have to decide to do it because you almost do have to dis like decide in the morning, whatever happens today, I will, like pre-deciding that you're going to forgive regardless of what happens. Yeah, I wake up in the morning now and I say, like, God, give me an unoffendable heart. Like, oh, please, yeah, okay. because I, I can easily walk in offense. I'm like, well, well you know, like, <laughs> I'm all, like, but I've really... Especially these past few years have been intentionally trying to wake up and say, God, please guard my heart so that I can be unoffendable. Mm -hmm. Like, like help me to let things kind of not where I walk and, like and be like aloof of things, mm -hmm. but but that I let things kind of roll off. And I have gotten a lot better. And I'm not I'm not where I want to be yet, mm -hmm. but I have gotten a lot better with like forgiving yeah. and letting things go a little quicker. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yeah. because I know. Like, especially, I have a lot of, and everybody has a lot of reasons to be angry at people or be frustrated with people. But just with what I've walked through these past few years, I just like, I, I just don't, I don't want the weight of being yeah. mad. It's, it's, it's heavy. Yeah, it's, that's the thing. It's just, heavy. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's not. It like, it's heavy. It's mm -hmm. heavy to yeah. be angry all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, it like, it robs you of, of, of the present. Yeah. It, it, and, and I. And, and like I feel sometimes I was feeling justified in being angry, sure, and being upset and being oh yeah, you know, There's wanting a, to get a back. A lot you know? of reasons for people sure. to be offended, mm -hmm. to be justifiably angry. Yeah, but like you said, we can't we can't live in that. No, I I didn't want I don't want to live in it. I, I and I've literally seriously this past year especially. I try to wake up because I, like other than even the fear, I wake up now with so much more gratitude because. Satan really dealt like he was really worn with me with mm -hmm. feeling like I was alone mm -hmm. in a lot of things because I was so angry at people and so disappointed in people. I really was like, God, where were you when all this stuff was happening? Like, did you abandon me? So like that was a season. This past season has been difficult. Me and God have been really wrestling. Like, sure. where were you? Like, mm -hmm. how did this happen? And you let it happen. And how did you let it happen for so long? Like, and then you let me find out. And then it just all went. It just went worse you know once I found out and so I was mad at God you know I was really mad at God and so honestly like I have that fear of God but now I have so much more gratitude towards him too because 
because I feel his love now. I feel like I, I'm grateful for him even allowing me to go through that angry season with him. Mm-hmm. You know, I think if we think about our offenses toward God, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing that anybody has done to me or to you or to any of us that's greater than our sins and offenses mm-hmm. yeah. against God mm-hmm. and how merciful he is to us mm-hmm. and how many things we do that we don't even realize we do. Mm-hmm. You know, David prayed that God would forgive him for his unconscious faults, <laughs> for even things that he didn't know about. And I pray that real often because mm-hmm. there's no telling how many times a day. I mean, if God wanted to get mad and stay mad every time we did something wrong, he'd have to be mad at us all the time. Yeah. So that helps, too, if we think about, well, yeah, what you did was wrong, Mm -hmm. but, you know, I've done a lot worse. I I think it's really good to talk about some of the very practical things that that we've all dealt with Mm -hmm. because it really helps other people. I mean, Jay was just doing that and Mm -hmm. talking about what what you've been through with your divorce in this last season. And I think it gives hope to other people to think, yeah, I, f- I feel that way, or I have felt that way, but she's able to forgive. She's able to forgive. God forgives me. Mm-hmm. You know, how can I move forward? So, Erin, are there particular areas for you that you've had to really deal with this forgiveness thing? Sure. One of them I'm going to save. I want to talk. It's my question for Joyce. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> then I'll come back to no, that one. <laughs> We're not leaving until it's answered. Um, but I was thinking about this a few years ago. Um, I had, it was my first leadership position here. And so somebody left and I had to go through all their emails. And so I found emails about me and mm. how I was young and didn't deserve this and all this stuff. And I thought, oh my goodness, I, I was already insecure. And then I had to read all this stuff that people were saying about me. I found something else on the internet about me as well as a person, as a leader. And so I, I remember- That's terrible. It was awful. Wow. But and this is where it's easy to get offended for other people too, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> you're nice and you love me. I, I know, I what? know. Who was it? <laughs> but I, I had to fight really hard because I knew God was putting me in that position for a reason. And I could only do the best that I could do. And maybe there was truth to what they were saying. Maybe I was naive or I don't remember. I don't even remember what they said. But I had to choose to not dwell on what they said and forgive them. I never got to talk to them about it because they were gone. But I had to choose to forgive for my own like freedom Mm -hmm. and to not be held back from what God was calling me to do. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was hard because there was no closure. I didn't get to have a conversation about it. I just had to decide in my own mind, this is not who you are. This is not you. Like learn from this, but do your best. And Yeah. I like what you said, though, that if you didn't do that, that God wouldn't be able to work in your life and in this new role for you the way that you wanted yeah. him to, the way that you wanted to be used by him. Because I could see how it would have held me back. I would have held yeah. myself back because of my own insecurities about what I heard or read. But I also, there was enough stubbornness in me that I wasn't going to let that person stop what God was doing, you know? Yeah. So. Well, and a lot of times we have insecurities that they have to be taken care of on this level Mm -hmm. in order for us to go to this level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I experienced that every, I could look back in my ministry and each time that God has promoted me to another level, I've experienced rejection Hmm. on the level that I was on. Mm -hmm. And I've really learned from that, that rejection is the biggest tool that Satan uses to try to keep us from going forward. Hmm. And, I mean, the last time I was leaving my position at the church and going out into this ministry that I, (laughs) you know, that we now have, Uh but that didn't exist then. Yeah, you didn't know what it was going on. It was like, go, I heard God say, go north, south, east, and west, Mm -hmm. and nobody knew me. I didn't, I mean, it was a huge step of faith. I mean, I was getting judgment and criticism and accusation. Everything from you're full of yourself and you're just, you know, on and on and on. And it was so hurtful to me. Mm-hmm. And it took me a good three years to get over it. But I realized many years later that if that wouldn't have happened, those people 
that did that to me, they would have been the ones that I would have wanted to have taken with me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and been on the staff of this ministry. Mm-hmm. And it would have been wow. even more dangerous to me then yeah. than now. And so, and even, look how much better it turned out. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 you guys. Just saying. So, <laughs> even, even when things are hard like yeah. that, mm-hmm. you know, it's not, it's not God doing it. It's not even God letting something happen. Yeah. People are people make their own choices, right, yeah, they make wrong people. choices. Yeah. But mm-hmm. God is good enough to use mm-hmm. even the bad things that people do to our benefit. Sure. Yeah. Mm. And I think something something with that is like you were saying, it forced me to go to him. Right. Because I couldn't rely on their validation of right. Aaron, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. That that taught me early on in leadership that I have to continually point my my head to him to get my mm-hmm. validation, not right. in the people I'm working with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And something you said about um, when you were talking about, like, even though you didn't get closure. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. Like, mm-hmm. y- you want to have, like, that's how you know that you've forgiven because you've had a conversation, you get the closure. Well, I know I didn't get closure at right. all, you right. know, and that's a hard place to for to say, I forgive you even though I don't, I don't get a, well, I got an I'm sorry, but it was like, I'm sorry, but then kept doing all the junk. But it, you know, so that doesn't Not feel like sure. a sorry, you know. But I'm I'm learning more that forgiveness. People say this all the time, you know, like forgiveness is not about the other person; it's for you. Mm-hmm. And I'm learning that more and more now. So I don't have to get the closure. I don't have to get the I'm sorry. It's not. It's not about hearing anything from the other person. It's relieving. This is something I've just been thinking about, like relieving this person, people. Period. Um, of of dictating how my emotions are like mm-hmm. if I'm happy or sad, mm-hmm. like, like I, I don't want to let go of that. I don't want people's actions to determine my mood yeah. or my, right. like, so I've just been, it's like, I'm, I don't care if I get a, I'm sorry for you. I'm letting you go because I don't want to give anyone but God that authority mm-hmm. in my life. Because I was realizing I was like, people would do stuff. I'd get mad or people, I'd be happy. And it's like, people are, I'm people's puppets at times, yeah. you know, yeah. like, and yeah. I don't want to live like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I had a really good friend ask me the question and she was very upset about something. And she said, but I don't have to forgive them yet because they haven't asked me to. <laughs> if they ask me to, I'll have to forgive them. But, and, and I'm thinking it's just such a natural thing for so many of us to wait mm-hmm. yeah. for that. So you know, I don't have to deal with this yet. Mm-hmm. And if they ask me to forgive them, I, I will. But you're right, that, that forgiveness issue is so much more about our hearts yeah. that we, if we wait for somebody else, it may never come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's not the key anyway. It, it's about what God wants to do in our lives. And even when somebody comes and says they're sorry, I'm not saying that it doesn't help at all. But like, my mother didn't tell me she was sorry for what she let my dad do to me for 30 years. Mm. And I can't necessarily say that once she said it, it made me feel right. Sure. It doesn't better. change anything. <laughs> yeah. and, and I, I guess I just thought it was sad that she waited that long mm-hmm. to say anything. And so, what is closure really, anyway? You know, once you've had your heart ripped open by somebody, yeah. do you ever really, yeah, get it closed? <laughs> yeah, I guess I think part of it is wanting just that, honestly, that validation that like. You wronged me, so right. tell me. it is. I want to hear it. Yeah, I want somebody to say I was wrong. Yeah, yeah. and I, it's it's hard also to say to tell you I forgive you when I don't think you deserve it, and like like I'm giving you the power back mm-hmm. because until I forgive you, I'm holding the power. Mm-hmm. And once I say I forgive you, I'm moving past this. It's saying okay, well it's, now it's equal again. Well, before yeah. we continue, can we? Because I want to make sure people understand. This the biggest detriment to forgiveness is that people don't understand that forgiving somebody doesn't necessarily change how you feel about them. Mm-hmm. This has nothing to do That's with good. feelings. And that, yeah. that is the biggest problem. People think, well, I haven't forgiven you because I still feel a certain way about you. Mm-hmm. And it was so helpful to me when God taught me that forgiveness is not a feeling. It's mm-hmm. a decision about how you're going to treat people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. in the opening statement, it's 
it's a decision to not talk bad about them, to pray for them, Mm -hmm. to even help them if they were in a position where they needed help and you could help them, to not spread rumors if you hear they've been blessed. You know, if somebody has hurt you, you hear they've been blessed, it's like, oh, well, you... There's a few things you just don't know. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's like you just don't want to. And so it's really, it's so important for people to realize you, you'll you never think you've forgiven anybody if you wait to feel better about mm-hmm. them. I mean, I've shared that all the years that I took care of my mom and dad in the nursing home, there was never one time that I went to visit them that I really wanted to go. I did it because I felt like it was the right thing to do, and it was what God wanted me to do. Mm-hmm. And I think... You know, love is as much about doing the right thing as it is feeling the right way about somebody. So how do you know if you've truly forgiven? I think it's by how you treat people, by how you treat them. You know, I mean, I know that I forgave my mom and dad because I took care of them until they died. I did what God Mm -hmm. asked me to do. Mm -hmm. I was not, I didn't mistreat them in any way. I wasn't mean to them. I provided for them and I took care of them good. And I did that because of my love for God. Mm-hmm. And uh, But I couldn't, you know, God didn't expect me to have gooey, gushy feelings mm-hmm. about them because of what they had done to me. Yeah. Sure. And I remember my mother asking me one time, how do you feel about me? Hmm. And I thought, well, here we go, you know. <laughs> and I'm, I thought, I'm not going to lie to her. And I just told her, I said, you know, I don't feel about you the way that a girl should feel about her mother because of what you let happen to me. But I said, I do love you as a child of God, and I will always make sure that you're taken care of. And so that's you. To me, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to choose to do the right thing Mm -hmm. no matter what somebody else does. We choose to do the right thing. Yeah, that's so good. And like, also with that, like forgiveness, I've just realized it's not forgetting yeah. or excusing the mis, the you know, the bad behavior. And when you say that, like, I know for a fact that this particular season that I've just walked through, I would not have been able to do it without everybody watching this. You and your testimony, you guys, because I did some last week. I don't think I, I don't know if I told no. y'all. I. My ex is getting married, okay? Y'all have been on this little journey with me, right? My ex is getting married, and he's getting married very quickly and soon. And I knew that my daughter was about, well, I found out that they, you know, that my daughter's in the wedding, and they're about to move in together. (laughs) They're about to move in together and all that good stuff. And that was hard. But I knew the right thing to do was to bless them, forgive them, and have a conversation because we're now in this thing together. Even though my daughter's 18, we're still mm. we're still like, I guess you call it a blended family. I don't know. Like we're now in <laughs> yeah. this, and I'm not trying to be anybody's best friend, but I'm saying if my daughter's <laughs> living there, like they're, we're about to be yeah. connected, you know? So yeah. I was just like, it's the right thing to do to speak to, you know, her and him. And so we got on, a, I requested a call. We had a call. I was like, hey, I just wanted to introduce myself to you guys and or wow. to you and blessings to you all in your marriage. And I really was genuinely good for you. I, I'm so proud of you. I, 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 I know it was God, but I know because of your testimony. But I mean, look like, at how far God's brought you mm-hmm. in the last year. Yeah. To be able to do that. Yeah. And that's exactly the kind of behavior that God is looking for. And it takes spiritual maturity. And you did yourself such a favor in doing that. Yeah. Because you could have lost your relationship with your daughter. Yeah. yeah. If you would have handled it a different way. Yeah. And just been full of bitterness and angry all over again. And it's really God does not tell us to forgive people for them. Mm-hmm. It's not because they deserve it. It's because we deserve it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure you didn't really oh. look forward to doing that. You no, didn't really I, feel like no, doing it. No, my heart it. was, it was beating. I was nauseous the entire like time before, okay. you know, but I knew it was the right thing to do. I thanked her for in, like in, including my daughter in the wedding. Like and I as soon as I got off the phone, I kept I kept the call short, you know, because I could feel myself about to take a little turn. <laughs> <laughs> 
What a great conversation. It's a good thing to talk about because forgiveness is hard for everyone. We understand how hard it can be to forgive someone after you've been so wounded and hurt, but it may be time to let go. You know, God asks us to do the hard things because he understands how valuable they are. It's time for you to be free. It's time to forgive. Let God help you. You know, there's so much in the word, in the Bible about forgiveness. There are so many great stories in the Bible about forgiveness and scriptures and promises where God says he will help you. So we have a free little booklet for you today that will walk you through what the Bible says about forgiveness. And I'm telling you, this will help you understand not only why, but how. It will help you to do it, and it's absolutely free. You can get it in a physical booklet just like this, or you can get it online as a a digital book, and it's just a really easy way to gravitate toward what the Scripture says and begin your walk to freedom. Now, be sure to join us back here tomorrow for part two of our Talk It Out discussion on forgiveness. There's more to talk about. We hope you'll join us then. It's time to finally forgive and be free. Joyce's booklet called Forgiveness will help you learn to let go of past hurts and move forward with life. You can trust God to make wrong things right, so quit holding a grudge and allow Him to work. This free resource is available today as a physical booklet or digital download. Visit online at JoyceMeyer.org or call 1-800-727-9673. Digital resources are stored on the Joyce Meyer app, so download it today. Have you set yourself to be Christ-like? Have you set yourself to let God completely change and transform you? Have you made a decision that you're gonna really get to know God through studying His Word and you're not gonna be satisfied to live some kind of a mediocre, half-baked, bumper sticker, Christian jewelry life with no fruit behind it to back it up? Come on, we're the army of God. We need to be well-trained, well-exercised, well-practiced, up and ready for anything. The 40th anniversary celebration of the Love Life Women's Conference just got even bigger with a live concert featuring Chris Tomlin. Register today for the Love Life Women's Conference September 22nd through 24th in St. Louis, Missouri. We hope you enjoyed today's program. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.